All right, thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the Hartford School Building Committee meeting. This is, it is Tuesday, January 17th, 2023. Uh, it is 12.03. My name is Paul Drummy, Building Committee Chair, and I call this meeting to order at 12.03. Mr. Little, can we do roll call, please? Sure. Mr. Paul Drummond. Here. Mr. Thomas Clark second. Here. Mr. Claudio Bazzano. Ms. Kim Oliver. Present. Mr. Al Gary. Here. Mr. Edison Silva. Here. Ms. Jahari Escribano. Mr. Uh, Clarence Corbin, Mr. Clarence Corbin, please. Here, here. All right, with five voting members and a chair, we do have All a right. board. Thank you and good afternoon. Good afternoon, Tony. Thank you. All right, everyone. Item number two on the agenda is the acceptance of minutes from the December 19th, 2022 meeting. Uh, is there a motion to approve? So moved. Can I get a second, please? Second. Kim Oliver. Thank you, Kim. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, thank you. All those opposed say nay. Hearing none, motion carries. All right, everyone. Item number three, uh, public particip participation. Is there anybody, any questions that came in? Anybody online that has a question to ask the committee? Thank you, Stan, appreciate you. Okay, moving on to item number four, administrative. No, we have no administrative items for today's agenda. Okay. Thank you, Jack. Appreciate you. Mr. Drummy, right, if I may interject. Yes. Please, Emily. I believe that this is a time where um, a vote is needed to add the agenda item as sent out by yourself last night. Okay, very good, thank you. Um, so it, this is with regards to Collier's. Is that accurate? That's correct. Okay, thank you, Jack. So, Everyone. So, what didn't make the agenda last last Friday? We um, we voted on the subcommittee voted on the CMs for the the three schools, and I'm asking if there's a motion to to bring forward the motion to approve accept the the construction managers for. Oh, I think it's to put it on the agenda, isn't it? Yeah, we right. have to add it to the motion added, a vote oh. added to the agenda. Thank you. Mr. Chair, if I may. Yes, please. To you, I'd like to make the motion that we uh, add to our agenda uh, the recommendation for the construction manager of the uh, three schools, Batances, um, Wish, and Canelli. Thank you, Councilman Claus. Is there a second? Yes. Al, second. Okay, thank you, Al. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed say nay. Hearing none, motion carries. Um, apologies, everyone. So, do we wait until Collier's? Yeah. Or do, do we? Okay. So, yeah, that will come up in, in Collier's um, updates to the committee. Yeah. Emily, I appreciate you. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. So moving on, everyone. Item number five, uh, current projects under construction, Arcadis OG, uh, CNR program management. Action, action five, or agenda item 5A, action items. Yes, we'll ask that we defer this item to a future meeting. Uh, this is the vote to accept Weaver as complete. Um, I'm sorry, we're deferring the Board of Ed action. This, this action is to uh, 
uh, to clear the hurdle with the building committee on accepting Weaver is complete. The, the work in the TV studio has concluded. Uh, so we are at a point of achieving financial closeout and we can now forward this to the next step uh, for the Board of Ed to accept it as complete at a future meeting. Uh, so it is our recommendation that the building committee accept the project and advance it to audit. Okay. Mr. Chair, so moved. Thank you, Councilman Clark. Can I get a second? Is there a second? Second, Kim Oliver. Thank you, Ms. Oliver. Discussion? Uh, yes. Uh, discussion, if I may, Mr. Chair? Of course, Mr. Gary, please. <laughs> okay, thank you. Um, uh, Jack, please bring me up to date as to the, where are we with this, um, this um, fire alarm system? I think we, we're supposed to, uh, are we in line, are we in queue for a, uh, uh, some type of a review? I'll defer to Mr. Drummy on that. Please, thank you, Jack. Uh, Mr. Gary, so yes, we are We are still internally working through the process to make sure that um, the Weaver fire alarm system can be accepted. Uh, we are not at that point yet, and I hope to update the committee at the next meeting. Does that affect where we are with accepting it and closing it? Does. it out can, okay. Yes, sir. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed say nay. Hearing none, motion carries. Uh, hey. Mr. Oh, Chair. Yes. Mr. Chair, uh, I wish to abstain at this time. Sure, one abstention. Okay, an abstention by Mr. Edison. And the remainder all be in eyes. The motion still carries. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. For, for, for context, yeah. uh, for context, as I mentioned uh, in, in presenting the item, uh, we will defer putting this in front of the Board of Education until that uh, that final report is is issued by the city. Yes. Perfect. Thank you, Thank you Jack. Thank you. Okay, the next item on uh, the agenda, everyone, 5A2, building and grounds. Jack? A similar transaction here to put the building and grounds roof, roof project in, uh, on the table for acceptance as complete. Uh, we have achieved financial closeout, and uh, this will be on, uh, again, we'll probably group this with, with Weaver you know, as a transaction for the Board of Ed for their acceptance, after which time it'll go to the state for uh, uh, for for final audit. So we ask for a motion to accept. Is there a motion? So moved. So moved by Councilman Clark. Can I get a second? Second, Kim Oliver. Thank you, Ms. Oliver. Second by Ms. Oliver. Discussion? I, I have a discussion point here. Jack, is there, mm -hmm. is there a benefit to, mm -hmm. to moving this forward on its own? versus having the FA system yeah, hold it up? Unfortunately, I'm in this. Uh, from an efficiency standpoint, uh, in order to get on the Board of Ed agenda, we have to go to the Choice and Facilities Commission first. So it, it's just more efficient to do two projects at the same time. There, there's no direct impact. You know, if, if it's a month different than, uh, than Weaver, there's no impact of waiting that month. Okay. And, and the mon monetary value, because this is a separate non-priority grant, so the monetary value of closing this grant out, understanding that it's only a month in between, and I'm agreeable, um, I'm just curious if, if the money tied to close out, Jack? Is significant enough to, to expedite? Uh, I'll put that question to Emily. Uh, I know we have, we had discussed it last week. It didn't uh, 
didn't seem as though it would have any any material impact on the city, but uh, I don't remember the exact number. Um, Paul, it won't have an impact on the city. This project is a 40% reimbursement project. Um, mm -hmm. And this is, a, like you said, a non-priority project, and therefore it's done with a, with a desk audit. So therefore these are very simply done and could be done within a month or two. So the city would receive its funds much faster than a regular size project. Okay. And also kind of coupling both of these with the board of education in one meeting and the efficiencies that come with that. So I'm satisfied. Any okay. further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed say nay. Hearing none, motion carries. All right, item 5A3, Buckley High School renovation. Yes, today we have change order number 11 to Newfield Construction for the uh, Buckley High campus project. Uh, this includes two items, a reconciliation of allowances from, from phase five and the cost of repairing some existing site lighting to keep it operational uh, during construction for the Board of Ed office occupancy. The net value here is a credit of $21,065. This has been reviewed and approved by the change order subcommittee and we ask your endorsement. Thank you, Jack. Is there a motion? So move. I'm sorry, I didn't catch who that was. Uh, Edison. Edison, thank you. Is there a second? Second. Al? That's Al. Mr. Second. Gary? Al Gary? <laughs> second. Uh, discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed say nay. Hearing none, motion carries. All right, everyone, item number 5A4 on the agenda is Burns Latino Studies Renovation. Two items here, Jack. Uh, next up is change order number eight to PDS for the Burns renovation. Uh, this includes uh, some additional work required by field conditions, uh, as well as a, a redesign of the site uh, due to the, uh, um, the the deteriorated condition condition of the existing planter. Originally, the, pro the project was going to utilize uh, masonry restoration allowance funds to rebuild to repair the planter, um, but it would need basically a, a full replacement. So the lesser cost to the project is to remove the planter and regrade. Uh, all of these items have been reviewed and approved by the change order subcommittee, and we ask your endorsement. The net value of the change is forty one thousand. $947.44. Motion to approve. So move. Yeah. Second. Thank you, Second. <clears throat> Second by Councilman Clark. Discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed say nay. Hearing none, motion carries. Jack? Thank you. Next, we have a, re a request for authorization to solicit a structural special inspector. In addition to the testing lab, we'll need a, a, a structural engineer to uh, review and sign off certain areas of the uh, structural renovation of the building. Uh, at times, the engineer of record uh, can serve in that capacity. Uh, we like to get third party proposals for that as well to get a fresh set of eyes. Uh, the intent here is to solicit proposals for that service, bring it to the bid review committee and uh, thereafter award and then report back to the full committee the outcome of that effort. So we ask your authorization to solicit proposals. Thank you, Jack. Is there a motion to approve? Motion to approve. Thank you, Councilman Clark. A second? Second. Al, thank you. Discussion? <clears throat> Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 All, right. all those opposed say nay. 
Hearing none, motion carries. All right, everyone. Oh, item number five B on the agenda is project reports. Zach, I'll hand it over to you. Thank you. Uh, as we as we click through the report this month, we have uh, we're still continue con we continue to list the the budget as PBD for Buckley Central Admin and the renovation effort. Uh, we're still in the bidding process, uh, and it's anticipated that. Uh, uh, as soon as the bids are complete and we have the cost of the lease for the central office relocation, uh, we'll be able to uh, compute the revised numbers for both of these projects and get that moving forward. Uh, projects are still on track for August 2025 completion. For Burns, we have the approved budget increase at 55.4 and a confirmed uh, current expectation on uh, move-in date of December 24 versus the original August date. Next slide. At present, we are uh, compliant and exceeding the recommend the, uh, the expectations for MWBE uh, and Hartford resident labor at Buckley. Uh, we are exceeding the MWBE employment target at Burns and are making slow progress in coming up to our 30% for Hartford resident workers. One of the uh, difficulties we have with Burns is that as, a, as an occupied renovation, uh, we are only able to take over small areas of the building at a time. And uh, in discussions with the CM and the trades, uh, this is making it very difficult for some of the trade contractors to add Hartford resident workers to their workforce and keep them busy in Hartford. Um, so we'll we'll have a conversation as we look forward, understanding that occupied renovations is the lion's share of the work for future projects, and see how we might be able to uh, to better manage that expectation, giving people the opportunity to either number one take over larger areas of the building, which will be difficult, or or, or otherwise work with things so that the uh, uh, the employment of Hartford residents. Uh, by these trade contractors can be more consistent rather than you know two weeks on, come back in four months, another two weeks for some some next bite of the apple. Uh, so that is a difficulty, and we are in active discussion with the uh, with the CM and the trades on how we might be able to uh, to make that situation more effective for the for the trade contractors. Are there any questions so far? Okay, next slide. Uh, as we move over to Buckley, uh, as noted, we are still in the bid process. We have bids due on tomorrow, no, Thursday, the 19th. I believe the final bid packages are due to be reported. Uh, scope reviews are continuing with the trades that have already responded to bidding. And in the meantime, work on, on I'm ready. phase six is continuing. Uh, work on phase five, the demo and abatement and building cleanout efforts uh, are essentially suspended until such point as we bring the demolition contractor back to remove the old facade of the building, which will happen later on in the phase seven process. Uh, otherwise, work is continuing on uh, for phase six. Uh, bids are continuing their delivery process for phase seven and scope reviews are ongoing. Uh, we understand that uh, uh, a decision on the location and the cost of the Board of Ed uh, office lease uh, is coming shortly. Uh, and at that time, we'll be able to aggregate those numbers of the actual bid overrun plus the cost of the swing space and move our request forward first to the city council and then ultimately to the, uh, uh, to the state for reauthorization. Are there any questions on Buckley? I um I have a question, Kim Oliver. Please. Okay. Thank you. Um, thank you for for the update on Buckley. And it just really quickly regarding the swing space for um, central administration, just just a, a confirmation. I think you've already said it. So, in terms of the financing of that space for central administration. Um, that would not need to come to the Board of Education. Is that correct? Because it will be handled 
by this committee through and then city council state but would not require um dollars running at all through the board is that correct correct the the funding for that lease and the move out and the move back would become expenses chargeable against the buckley project okay great thank they you not, they would not hit the operating budget thank you very much Any other Buckley questions? All right, next slide, please. Uh, moving over to uh, to Burns, as I mentioned uh, last meeting, we did find an opportunity to uh, salvage some equipment from Wish that would allow fate our Area One uh, to become re-energized and allow occupancy to uh, to move forward in February as planned. This will allow us to move to area two, the second floor of, of that wing uh, for continued renovations you know, on schedule. Uh, otherwise, we are you know, pushing forward with construction in area one. We are getting uh, through the site work effort there as well. That's what turned up the condition of that planter that we just chose by change order to eliminate. And, uh, Moving forward, the uh, phase 3A, the technology package, uh, is still in the process of review with OSCGR. Uh, so our, our timeline, critical timeline on Burns is to complete Area 1 and return it back to the school in February, and then moving into Area 2 uh, in March. Uh, in the spring, we anticipate uh, some roofing work will, will commence um, over the gym and other, other areas, uh, and then we'll our critical path moving forward there is to have the balance of the electrical gear available uh, to energize area two. Uh, if continued delays in the supply chain happen and we don't have the electrical gear in time uh, for the completion of phase two, it will cause an impact on the overall schedule of the project. Um, but we're, we're hopeful that uh, the, the extended delay is the last extended uh, delivery date that will uh, will be offered for that gear and that we'll be able to maintain progress moving into the summer. Are there any Burns questions? Well, uh, Mr. Chairman, may I address uh, Jack on some issues here, please? You, you may, Mr. Thank Gary. You, um, Jack, I, I, and for the audience, I think it's, it's, it, it should be underscored how difficult this is. Um, Bullet four under uh, area one in blue up there, uh, and also the, the, the supporting photograph at bottom right, you are taking equipment out of Freddie, Fred D. Wish to place in Burns to, to remain on schedule because we cannot get that electrical equipment brand new, correct? That's correct. And you're reporting that, uh, excuse, excuse the beeping. You're reporting that um, the switch gear, a long lead item, could upset our schedule for completion. Is that also correct? That's correct. If you'd like to elaborate on that a little bit, add a little more color to this, I, I think we need to really feel the impact of what's happening with access to uh, equipment on order. It's not always your fault, the John, uh, the contractor's fault. It's other other things that we have no control over. Please, please. Um, I I I think I took a little more time to to underscore that. But if you if you if you care to, in your own words, just add to that because I, this is a very this is a, this is a trouble. This is a problem, and it's just not electrical switch gears. Other items too. Go ahead, Jack. It, it does extend to other items. Uh, essentially, you know, in the construction industry, we don't think too much about computer chips, but yeah. uh, a lot of the modern equipment uh, contains some level of logic board you know, el you know, in there, whether it's HVAC equipment, uh, even, even some of the types of breakers we need to use these days have an electronic component to what otherwise looks at just as an electrical item. Uh, and these items were ordered timely and the the, uh, the delivery date that was provided at the time of ordering uh, has been amended uh, once if not twice toya can you clarify that Is this the second extension we've received yes 
And what is the presumed current delivery date on the, on the gear? I believe it is um, October. Matt, if I'm not, if, if I'm not correct, let me know. Yeah, right now we're, we're, we're targeting November 1st. They're telling us October, but delivery dates right now are not reliable at all. Um, so we're, we're, we've just got November 1st penciled in. So, and this is from, from the date of ordering to that presumed November 1st date would be how long a lead a procurement period? 71 weeks. And this is gear that, you know, in, in the good old days of two years ago, uh, we would probably see arriving on our doorstep 12 weeks after the shop drawings were approved. So, uh, yeah, as, as you can see, it's, it's quite a wild card and uh, uh, the craziness extends to other areas such as you know, mechanical equipment, uh, even, even some lighting fixtures are, are having difficulties, but uh, uh, we're all doing what we can to mitigate and find workarounds. And even, you know, as we, we noted previous meetings, you know, even to rebuild the old gear um, that was in Burns in order to, to make it last another 20 years was impractical since the supply of spare parts for old gear has dried up due to this, you know, this same crunch. Um, so we're, we're thankful that we've at least got uh, roofing materials in storage. And as soon as we get the weather, you know, we'll, we'll actually be able to put a roof on the building. But uh, you know, some of the internals are, are still to be determined. Thank you, Jack. And thank you, Mr. Chair, for allowing us to dwell on that a little bit more for um, our listening uh, audience. Important, Al. Thank you for bringing it up. And it's important for us to realize that for the next three, right? As we have colliers um, on the on the line here, what we can do and what we can have the, the the CMs that we're about to bring on board think outside the box to stay ahead of it if we can. Thank you, Jack. Next slide. Uh, with our look aheads so again, the the. Primary activity at Buckley, in addition to phase six moving forward, is to complete our bidding effort, um, which again is, uh, is, is anticipated later this week. And then crunching our, uh, our reauthorization request dollar value at Burns. Uh, we're continuing on with area one, the data closet and uh, electrical service. February final, final inspections with a move in date of the 20th through 24th. And then in March, uh, beginning our disruptions uh, of area two, cut cap and make safe, uh, and then uh, rearrange our logistics for area two, and then begin our de demolition effort. Uh, so again, we're thankful that we're able to uh, maintain progress at Burns at this point and keeping our fingers crossed with the supply chain. Thank you, Jack. Kelly, is there one more slide or is that our conclusion? Uh, off to Collier's. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Jack. Appreciate you. All right, everyone. Item number six on the agenda today is current projects under design Collier's project leaders. And we will we will get in the action item agenda that we motioned on in the beginning of the meeting. Uh, Ray, Scott, walk us through. Okay. The our next step was to hire a construction manager. Uh, we started that endeavor back in October. We took original qualifications in November 14th with uh, five firms responding. Uh, we rated those down. We ended up putting out a short list of four firms. Those four firms were Downs, Demio, uh, Newfield Construction, and PDS. On December 13th, we had a walkthrough on the site so that everybody was on the same page when they put the proposals together. We received the proposals on December 22nd, and we interviewed these four firms on Friday, January the 13th. The results from those interviews were Downs was number one selection, Newfield was number two, Demio was number three, and PDS was number four. As we looked at the, the fees, the fees were broken down by school, and, and by contractor. As a result, Downs's fee ended up being 4,025,795. Uh, 
these fees include all the pre construction costs, general conditions, insurance bonds, and their their fees. So Downs again, Batonsis was a four million O two five seven nine five. Canelli was four one two zero seven oh seven and Wish was two million nine hundred and two hundred and seventy three. Newfield came in at Batonsis at four million six hundred and seven ninety six. Canelli at four million one hundred and twenty eight thousand two hundred and seventy eight. Wish was three million eight thousand seven hundred and forty five. Dimio only put a proposal together for Wish, and that was four million three three hundred fifty eight four hundred and forty dollars. PDS only put a proposal in for Wish. Also, their number was four million four hundred twenty thousand eight hundred fifty. This, as a result, the selection committee reviewed all the proposals, the the interview comments, and made a decision. They decided to put before this committee uh, the following selections. Batances, they were recommending putting downs out there for the four million dollar four million twenty five thousand seven hundred ninety six fee. Canelli, they wanted to go again with downs construction at four million one hundred twenty thousand seven hundred seven, and they elected to give wish to the Newfield construction at the three million eight thousand seven hundred forty five. So it was the rec the recommendation from the committee was such. To, to recommend uh, the award of the construction management contract to those firms. And that's what I'm putting in front of the committee at this time. Thank you, Ray. Appreciate the breakdown. Is there a motion to award these construction managers as presented by Collier's project leaders? Mr. Chair, I'd like to make the motion that we award the construction managers as presented by Collier's. Thank you, Councilman Clark. Is there a second? I second. Al Gary, thank you. Discussion? Uh, before you vote, uh, Mr. Please. Chairman, may I make a comment? Of course, Al. Thank you, sir. Um, um, to all listeners, this um, review and evaluation process is was not just done haphazardly, um, um, I don't know quite how to say the sausage was made, but it was, it was, it was, um, it was well uh, uh, um, reviewed and, and scrutinized and discussed thoroughly amongst uh, uh, all of us uh, in making this decision. Uh, Councilman Clark, you may wanna add to that if you, if you choose. Here, if I may. Um, uh, yes, just to just add a little uh, more layer to that. It was, uh, uh, these things are never taken lightly. Uh, and uh, as uh, Gary said, that we do uh, review these uh, RP proposals under high level scrutiny. Uh, and <clears throat> there is a lot of work and review that is put into it. Uh, kudos to Collier staff uh, that uh, provided all of the uh, documents for us to review and I um, uh, appreciate all of the uh, four firms that came uh, to provide their presentations to the selection review committee. Uh, these are things that we do not take lightly uh, and then our bottom line is making sure that you know the best presenters and with the best uh, form of, uh, uh, budget are, are uh, looked at and you know we are doing this for the best interest of our students in our city uh, and also to for Harvard Public Schools. I couldn't say it that well. Al, <laughs> <laughs> oh, you did great. <laughs> Any further and, 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 Please. Yeah, if my uh, Clarence. So how is price uh, considered in, in the proposals uh, with their kind of a dominant factor? It's it's the last factor we look at in the RFQ mm -hmm. process. We start with the qualifications. We narrow it down uh, to get to the the short list by doing a a, a grading process. Uh, at that point, the selection committee gathers. We decide who's going to be shortlisted. Uh, at that point, they elected for the four that you saw in front of us. Mm -hmm. Just to give you an idea, the ratings Downs Construction was 
uh, number one, during the RFQ process, during the RFP process, and during the interviews. Uh, Newfield was second during the RFQ, as, as well as during the interviews and during the dollars. Demio is number three for the RFQ, number three for the uh, the interviews, is, and number three in the dollars, but they were only submitting for WISH. Yeah. And, and PDS followed up in the end. Ray, if I can just add on to that. So the fees weren't even presented to the selection committee until after the interviews. Um, Correct. But that Correct. was uh, it, being it, seen it does, by the committee. Right. It, the fees do come become a, a, the issue at the end. You always have to pay attention to your dollars. And uh, I'm sorry, through, through the chair. And how many of the um, workforce or uh, teams are part of Hartford teams, or there were people in Hartford participating in um, in Downs and in uh, Newfield's uh, uh, group? They, they they both had heavily they had heavy heavy uh, participations by a partnership that they had uh, for okay. each one of these schools. For each one of these. Newfield was looking at MCM acoustics and uh, Downs was heavy into to Kurt's company. Seven Summit. Nutmeg. And Nutmeg, I'm sorry. It's okay. So yeah, both of these firms, um, Clarence, were, were, were pretty impressive when it came to community engagement and, and reaching out and, and letting the, the community know that the opportunity is coming and, and how can they foster um, our community to to get them involved um, it, it was it, it was one of the best parts of both interviews for both Newfield and Downs I was listening to to what they were going to do to um, to capture um, the community's attention and then have them be involved in the projects uh, if I may also add to that um, both these companies came in with relationships that were ongoing before they they just didn't set up these relationships uh, to get our attention or, or favor our vote for this particular project. They came in already doing things outside of this. So that was also uh, impressive. Um, again, I, I congratulate this team for doing a uh, evaluation of the, the, you know, the people that are going to be ser servicing the city of Hartford for a while. So congratulations on that process. Thank you, Clarence. Mm -hmm. Any other discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed say nay. Hearing none, motion carries. All right, everyone. Uh, item number 6A on the agenda is project reports from Colliers, right? Yep, we're good. Uh, next slide. Project summary chart, nothing's changed as far as schedule or completion dates. Next slide. Uh, Patan says, we're heavily into the existing condition surveys. Uh, we've had uh, architects go into the building they may be able to pop ceiling tiles. They may be able to run their their uh, machines to to scan the building. So they're in the process of putting together some some drawings for us to look at to show existing conditions and be, to help us with the more accurate design standards. The has material consultants been on site. He's done all the interior. He's done all the interior for Batances. He does need to get back on the roof, but he'll do that in the next week or so. Critical items, we're looking at construction manager we just voted on. Commission agents, you'll be seeing in the February uh, building committee. Next slide. Canelli, when it's pretty close to the same stage, uh, we're about 2% in design process. That just includes all your, all your existing condition surveys. There again, they popped the tiles. They've been able to get above the ceilings. They've done all their scans and they're putting pencil to paper as we speak. Has a material consultant. He's done most of the interior. He's still got some interior to do. 
He's also got to come back and do the ceiling. I mean, the roof and he's on schedule to get done on time and on budget. Critical items, interviews, we just, construction management, we just selected, commissioned agents, same time frame. We're looking at the February the school building committee meeting. Next slide. Oh, Ray. Rish. Yes. Me, Ray, I just want yep. to interrupt a moment. Before you mm -hmm. go to the next slide, next slide uh, maybe just pause a moment and give uh, us a chance to, well, just ask if we have any questions of you before we go. I don't have one, but just, just a, just a sure. little. It, it's harder to go back and or to pause you as uh, if if you know just give us a little moment there. Thank thank you. Sure. This is very good though. Thank you. Our schedule completion dates remain the same for both projects. Our budget remains the same for both projects. The pay to date is starting to climb, but it's still pretty low. We will go for uh, an EDO forty six to get reimbursement and drawdowns when that number reaches about two hundred thousand dollars. Okay, Al. Okay, with me. I don't know with anybody else. <laughs> Ray, just ask any questions before you flip a slide. That's all. Okay, any questions here? All right, next slide. Again, the budget's still the same. Uh, we paid to date about forty thousand dollars. Once we get to two hundred, we'll go for a drawdown. Schedule stays the same. Uh, our design process: we're about two percent in with the existing conditions. Architects are putting pencil and paper. They're making things happen. As hazardous material consultant has been on the interior, he still has to come back to do the roof, but all the samples are out and we're waiting for results. Construction managers, we just elected those. Commission agent, we're again, we're looking at February high school, uh, school building committee to give us those answers or have that in front of you guys. Any questions? Next slide. Got nothing to report here until we get into construction. So we're about a year away from this chart, this slide actually changing. Next, next slide. This is the rest of January. We've, we've got an RFQ going out for, uh, RFQ for the commission agent to do the end of January. At that point, we'll get the selection committee together within the next couple of days from that date. Next slide. So I'm looking to have the selection committee be able to put a short list for the commission agents. On the 6th, uh, we are going to the state to meet uh, OSC GNR for Canelli on the 7th, on Wish on the 8th, and Batansas on the 9th. That's a pre-bid, that's a pre-project meeting that we have with the state to set up the expectations from the construction manager, the architects, the user, and the state. I'm looking to get the selection committee together on the 15th to interview the commission agents and make a recommendations for our Hartford School Building Committee on the 21st. Next uh, slide. Uh, uh, Ray, Go ahead. Um, what's the, um, explain to everyone the uh, commission agents uh, duties. Commission agents make sure the building operates properly. Uh, on the mechanical side, it's making sure that you've got the right flows through the building, that your fans are going in the right direction, uh, that the temperatures are being monitored properly, that all the systems work, all your dampers, all your VAVs function like they're expected to function. On the envelope side, they make sure that all the envelope, the, the exterior of the building is, is, design, is built for the design to make sure that we don't have any water infiltration as the, as, the years tick by on the building. So it makes sure that you have a viable building. It's it's another check to make sure that everybody's on board to do what needs to be right. done. And you have a building that's that's functional for the next 50 years. So we just don't believe the engineers then. <laughs> no, and we don't trust anybody. Also part of the high performance standards, uh, you need to have a commission agent at least to do the initial commissioning. And and that's the ultimately where we're we ended up going here. So the initial commission agent is just the the basic. It's not anything extension over and above if, the high if performance. I, if I may opine on that just a bit further, you know, initially the commissioning agent is going to meet with um, city staff, um, look at your standards, develop the owner's project requirements, 
um, and then review the specifications as those are being developed by the different design teams to make sure that all the requirements, all your basis of design requirements are being incorporated correctly in the design. So it's not just a matter of checking the installation to make sure that as the building is being constructed, it's being constructed accurately and all the systems tested properly so they will function as designed. But it's also working with the city initially coming up with your owner's project requirements and then making sure that those requirements are um, accurately reflected in the design documents when the project goes out to bid. Excellent. Ray, the, was there an invite put out for next Wednesday? Or not, uh, next February, never mind. It's in oh, February, geez. right. Yeah. Ray, I think the, the, the other thing you may just want to comment on is just on the process of the programming with the architects. I know you did have a meeting, uh, I believe, with JCJ last week, and you've got meetings with the other architects that you're working with, Sherry. You want to just quickly update the committee on that process? Well, part of the process we we go through is a programming stage where each one of the architects sit down with the administration and comes up with what they really need in the building. Ed specs were pretty generic, so they need to narrow down square footages and and how the system actually operates at this point. So we're in the process of getting everybody together to different departments uh, through the administration to to nail down what the administration is actually expecting in these goals, and that that occurs that goes on till uh, into February into March because we do have the next slide shows our SCD meeting. SCDR meeting. The schematic packages are due on the end of March, so they need to have something together and something to, for everybody to look at. Uh, I just going to skip a little bit there. Programming stage is, is where you come up with this, the standards for the buildings, and that's what we're dealing with the administration. Once we get the standards in place, the architects will take those standards and start putting together a schematic design. That design will include uh, how spaces are laid out and how the building will start looking at. And towards the end of March is when we meet, is when we're expecting to have those schematic designs from the architect uh, in our hands so we can take a look at it. And if you look in April, this is our biggest key date. Next, next slide, please. You see towards the end of April, you've got the, the 25th and 26th. We're going in front of the S OSCGNR with these designs with these schematic designs to so have them take a look at it and have their input. Any further questions? If you go to the next slide, it just gives you May. If I may, Ray, how come go ahead. where's Canelli? Canelli is actually into to May. Into May, okay, thank you. Uh, if I may, Mr. Chairman, uh, right before you, I, I, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm missing Don't. something. Are, are, is there going to be a, 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 a presentation to us as to the schematics, or, or is that does that stay with you guys? Uh, schematics will be on board for everybody to take a look at in the end of uh, March. So we'll do. We'll actually have some sort of approval on the the 17th of April before we go in front of the state. Okay, so there, there there will be a presentation of the design teams to uh, uh, to this body. Yes, I also need to get the advisory committees involved before that time frame. I just don't have a day for those yet. Thank you. So Thank before you, we go to the state, I need your approval. Is is oh. ultimately what I'm going to be looking for. Okay. Thank you, Ray. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Welcome, Al. Any other questions? Anything else, with that, Ray? That, with that, that's my report. All right. Thank you, Ray. All right, everyone. Item number seven on the agenda, future projects and development. So um, at one point or another, as, as it is planned now, everyone, we're going to have 11 schools in progress in one way or another. Uh, think about that for a moment. Um, so Moylan, McDonough, and Parkville made it to the priority list. So these projects are going to um, start moving forward to uh, solicit 
um, representation to guide the city through uh, the processes of what we're going through now with Colliers and Arcadis. Um, and on top of that, Batchelder, Sanchez and Sands, um, working with the, the city's gonna work with the Hartford Public Schools and the Board of Education on the educational specifications for those schools, as well as a, uh, you know, a, a proper facilities assessment. So when we do our, our application um, before the deadline next June, um, we're, my, my goal is to have it done well before June. So we're not um, having a fire drill at the last moment. So, um, so that's happening as well. Any questions on future projects? No, just a crazy comment. We're going to run out of workers to do all this work here. We, it's, it's, <laughs> the labor well, force is getting very thin. <laughs> hopefully, Downs and, and, and Newfield can can start fostering and building these the labor force within. Okay. All right. Hearing no questions, moving on to item number eight on the agenda, everyone, is project closeout. Uh, we have no no projects currently in the closeout mode. Thank you, Jack. Uh, number nine on the agenda, everyone, is other business. Any other business from the committee? Hearing none, we move on to item number 10 on the agenda, everyone, and that's adjournment. Is there a motion to adjourn? So moved, Kim Oliver. Kim Oliver, thank you. Second? Second. Claudio. Claudio, second. Thank you, Claudio. Uh, discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed say nay. Please don't. Hearing none, motion carries. Thank you, everyone. We appreciate your volunteerism for the good of the city of Hartford. We'll talk soon. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye Thank now. you.